Hello and welcome to this video covering alternating hemiplegia in stroke. This is a form of paralysis or weakness that has both ipsilateral and contralateral consequences of motor function and it's all down to the anatomy. So should you come across alternating hemiplegia in stroke then it's an immediate sign that there is an issue going on in the brainstem. So we've got our midbrain pons and medulla here making up the brainstem. We're going to use the oculomotor nerve as an example drawing on its nucleus here unilaterally and we can connect up the parts of the corticobulbar tract for its motor outflow. The blue neuron here is the upper motor neuron that crosses over and synapses with the contralateral cranial nerve 3 nucleus. The lower motor neuron in green leaves there and will eventually pass into the periphery going off to the orbit via the superior orbital fissure and supplying the majority of the extraocular muscles of the eye. We now need to bring on our blood supply. This is the posterior circulation coming up the brainstem, also known as the vertebrobrasilla arterial system. The vertebral arteries unite to form the bacilla artery and we get pontine arteries coming from the bacilla artery and that will eventually continue to connect with the arterial circle known as the circle of Willis to give off the posterior cerebral artery. But for now we just need to worry about the bacilla artery and the pontine arteries supplying regions of the pons. So now we need to draw on our corticospinal tract that's now coming on in yellow. Now this runs anteriorly through the cerebral cruse of the midbrain. It travels down anteriorly within the pons and it will eventually get down to the medulla where it will cross over, decussate to the opposite side and supply muscles of the opposite side of the body and trunk. It crosses in a region of the medulla known as the pyramids. So what we'll see here is that if we were to have a lesion from a stroke, maybe, unilaterally that affected the cranial nerves that have motor functions, and in this case we're using the example of cranial nerve number three, the ocleomotor nerve, we are going to have ipsilateral problems with the cranial nerve in question, cranial nerve number three in this example, and we are going to have contralateral deficits of function related to the corticospinal tract. So corticospinal tract function equals contralateral weakness or paralysis, while the deficit of function associated with the cranial nerve three in this example means we would have ipsilateral weakness or paralysis of a number of those extraocular eye muscles. So alternating hemiplegia is an indicator that there is a problem with the brainstem. So should you see that in a case, then that will immediately make you think brainstem. There will of course be a number of other symptoms alongside alternating hemiplegia, but often hemiplegia is a component of brainstem stroke syndromes. Other cranial nerves that seem to be implicated more than most alongside cranial nerve number three is cranial nerve number six, the abducent nerve, and cranial nerve number 12, which is the hypoglossal nerve. They tend to be implicated more than the others. So that's our summary of alternating hemiplegia. We'll see you again next time. Subscribe to Soton Brain Hub for more videos to help explain the mysteries of the brain.